dear learners i am happy to introduce control systems the learning objectives of this presentation is to introduce the control systems and control engineering and its development to the learners the second objective is to expose the classification of control systems for various applications the word control has become inevitable and uh, unavoidable owing to the ever growing needs of industry and society we know that uh, science engineering and technology undergoing rapid advancement so because of this uh, rapid advancements it is possible to achieve various control tasks and meet the expectations of industry and society in this connection it is necessary to understand the technical features and aspects of the control systems if we want to select suitable control task or control tasks plural depending upon the application in any control application it is desired that the quantity of interest or the parameter of interest is controlled at a suitable level and suitable range then it has to respond faster to the input and settle down at the expected value in an optimum time to accomplish this control task one should be aware of the components of the system which is controlled modeling of system plays a crucial role in the design and analysis of control system modeling means representing the dynamic behavior of the system mathematically in terms of integral differential equations once we do the mathematical modeling we have to evaluate the response by subjecting the system to suitable inputs then we have to investigate the response in order to design suitable control strategies then finally the control system is analyzed to ensure whether the desired objective or the desired control tasks are achieved or satisfied the term state space approach is applicable to any system linear system non linear system time variant system time invariant system any type of system it is applicable in the state space approach we use internal variables as states whereas in the classical control approach we consider only input and output and it is applicable only to ltiv system in contrast to state space approach which is applicable to any system let us understand the history of the control systems that is how it is developed when it is developed all that we will see the scientist james watt developed the first automatic control system called watts governor so it was uh, developed in 19 1769 for controlling the speed of a steam engine the functional block diagram of that system is shown in the figure in that system the speed governor is used to regulate the flow of steam to the engine by changing the valve position and in turn controlling the speed so speed is taken as the feedback variable and it is compared with the desired speed so governor regulates the 
change in uh, speed and accordingly the control action takes place and the closed loop action takes place till the desired speed is achieved after the watts governor the theory and practice of control has gained lot of uh, momentum during the world war 2 second world war in second world war it, it it was necessary to design and develop automatic plane piloting gun positioning systems and radar control systems because it was necessary to attack the rival camps so it was necessary to design and develop such systems so degree of complexity and expected performance in such applications demanded sophisticated control techniques this particular aspect has stimulated greater insight into the control engineering for developing more and more new techniques nowadays each and every activity is influenced by one or the other control aspect in fact we can say we the human beings are the most sophisticated control systems in the world because our body temperature pressure pulse rate etc are automatically regulated to adapt to the changing environmental conditions some of the practical control systems or liquid level control ac that is air conditioner refrigerator fridge oven iron box traffic control automobile control then industrial process control robotic systems etc the concept of control is not only applicable to any specific engineering discipline like electrical or mechanical but it is applicable to all engineering domains it is even applicable to non engineering domains like inventory socio economics and political science now let us define certain terms used in connection with the control system so it comes under control system terminologies the first term system system is a group of elements interconnected to achieve a specific task or objective the system may be physical system or non physical system to cite an example electric motor so electric motor is a group of components so it is interconnected to achieve a specific task so automatic movement then automobile washing machine etc non physical system example socio economic system inventory system etc the next term in the control system terminology is the very word control system the control system is one in which any quantity of interest or parameter of interest in a machine or mechanism or equipment or plant or process can be altered or maintained according to the desired manner so as to achieve the desired tasks or desired objectives control systems can be classified broadly into open loop systems and closed loop systems the next term in the terminologies is plant or process it is a system or process which is controlled for achieving the desired control task the next term is error or activating signal it is the difference between the desired output and actual output in a feedback or closed loop system it is generated by an error detector and it is used to control the it is used to actuate the controller the next term control or manipulating signal controller produces control or manipulating signal based on the error the control signal is used to control the output of the plant or the process in order to produce the desired output the last term in the control system terminology is feedback signal it is usually the measured or the controlled output or actual output of the control system or a portion of the output 
which is to be compared with the desired output to produce the error signal. Next, let us discuss about the features of an open loop system. In open loop system, output does not have any effect over the input. The output is not fed back for comparison with the input. So I think it is wrongly uh, displayed. Output is not fed back. It is displayed as output fed back. Output not fed back for comparison with the input. It is cheaper because it involves only less components. Generally, the open loop system is stable. Open loop systems perform satisfactorily only when the effect of internal and external disturbances is minimum. It is used only when the input output relation is known ahead of time. That is, its performance is accurate as long as the calibration of the components is maintained properly. Any system which works on a predetermined or fixed time basis is called a, an open loop system. Example, a traffic light control system, washing machine. Let us see how these features of open loop system fit into these two examples. In a traffic light control system, the transition of signal happens from green to amber amber to red on a predetermined time basis the actual density of traffic happening at various junctions of the road is not taken into consideration therefore it works on a predetermined time basis that is what mentioned in the feature as it works on a predetermined time basis. Similarly, we don't know whether the traffic pattern is uniform in a particular junction all the times and all the days. So that is what we mean to say internal and external disturbances. If we consider the washing machine, here again, the output that we expect is cleanliness of cloth but there is no guarantee that the output that we come out of that comes out of washing machine is 100 percent clean because we don't measure the cleanliness of the cloth so it works on a predetermined time basis that is washing soaking rinsing drying all these operations they work on a fixed time basis only. Whatever mode that we select in our smart washing machine, which is available nowadays, it is an open loop system only. It works on a predetermined time basis. So we don't measure the output. So output has got no effect over the input. And it is not fed back. And because of... Uh, the output not being fed back, the system is generally stable. So I think we have covered all the points. Then we will uh, discuss the closed loop system or feedback system. In contrast to an open loop system, output is always measured and fed back for comparison with the input. Therefore, output has got effect over the input. The system is costlier because it involves more components than the open loop system. Because the feedback is the inherent property of the closed loop system. Because of the feedback, there is a possibility that the system may become unstable due to the unwanted oscillations. But the closed loop system performance performs satisfactorily even in the presence of internal and external disturbances. So it is not necessary that the system has to perform on a predetermined time basis. So input-output relation need not be known. So the performance will be accurate even though slightly insensitive and inaccurate components are used in a closed loop system. So example, air conditioning system, residential temperature control system, closed loop control of electric drives. For example, if we take the air conditioning system, 
we want to maintain the temperature of the system, temperature of the room at a particular uh, level suppose the ambient temperature is around 34 degree centigrade we want to have 24 degree centigrade so 24 degree centigrade is a desired output actual output is 34 degree therefore this difference is appearing as the error so based on the error compressing action takes place therefore more cooled air is sent into the room from the air conditioner therefore we we feel cool suppose the ambient temperature shoots up again the error becomes still more therefore still more cooling effect takes place in contrast if the ambient temperature becomes less accordingly compressing action gets uh, decreased therefore less cooled air uh, gets circulated inside so here we need not know the input output relation in advance even if there is some uh, something which is not sensitive to the variation it can be corrected because everything is controlled in closed loop so it is not necessary that each component has to be 100 percent accurate so that is the main advantage of the closed loop system but because of the feedback there is a possibility that the system may become unstable so the closed loop system can be operated manually or automatically accuracy of feedback systems can be affected because of the presence of human beings complexity of the system becomes more and more becomes more and more and the system becomes costlier when we employ more human beings we can make the system to perform faster with more accuracy if the human beings are replaced by automated equipments wherever possible in certain areas or certain systems presence of human beings even poses a threat to the life for example nuclear system missiles so in such systems we have some chemical reactions fission fusion all that taking place so human beings should not enter such a particular place so there also automation is required so the opportunities and challenges for the engineers who are choosing the control engineering as their discipline they have plenty of opportunities to control the various industrial automation systems because nowadays everything is automatic everything is industrial automation and we use robot man machine interface all that for uh, industrial automation so it is necessary that uh, we have to understand the features of such uh, systems then for overall development of society that also we should uh, improve the economy so keeping do these two aspects in mind if control engineers start working then they have lot of opportunities Similarly, they can face a lot of challenges when they model and control modern, complex and interrelated systems by establishing new techniques, available tools and technologies. Thank you.